What's up Multiverse, Dr. Dave here. Welcome to the Geek Lounge. On today's video, we're gonna go through my entire MCM Comic-Con haul. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. A quick apology to start this video off today because I said it was gonna drop yesterday, but I was just so tired after three long days of Comic-Con and I also had a bit of a stomach bug. Don't worry, I am gonna spare you guys the gruesome details. So I literally just watched TV or played video games and didn't even get dressed. Yes, I realize how gross that is. Anywho, let's get right into everything that I picked up from MCM Comic-Con London this past weekend. First up, we have these three booster boxes of the One Piece card game. We have Romance Storm, Paramount War, and Mighty Enemies. These are the Japanese versions that I purchased from Japan to UK. We'll be cracking these open in future videos, so make sure you stay tuned. And those weren't the only cards I came home with. I also did get these packs of DC Hero cards. I actually got them for free. They were handing them out. You could spin a wheel and you either got one, two, or three packs. I managed to land on the two. And then I actually got a third pack by answering a trivia question while I was waiting in the queue. Let's crack them open quickly and see what we get. All right, guys, I thought I'd shift the camera around for these. It's always better to open up cards this way. I have no idea what these sets are all about. I've seen them advertised before. I believe you can get like the uh, NFT uh, versions of each card. Like I think you scan the back or something like that. But yeah, I have no idea what like rare pulls or anything like that are. So yeah, I don't know. Like if I get something really cool, I'm really not going to know it. So I will need some help in the comment section below. So we have John Diggle, obviously from Arrow. We have Batman, one of those kind of old school, I guess, comic style covers. I'm assuming a lot of the art is uh, kind of from comic books and stuff like that. So we have the Daily Planet emblem there. We have, is that just like Blue Beetle poster, I'm assuming? Well, it's just really the, um, yeah, as you guys can see, they are do just all have the QR codes on the back. I'm assuming that's like a poster design. We have a Cyclone card there. I mean, that one's fairly cool. We have Black Adam there. That's like the uh, the live action version. Yeah, it is The Rock, isn't it? I think, is it live action? Just bring it up to my own. Yeah, yeah is the rock. I wonder if it was more a stylized design. And we have a hollow here as well. Does that say panel four? I'm just going to bring that one up to my own eyes, guys. Uh, was it Green Lantern doing some kind of battle? Page five of JLA Justice number nine from 2007. So yeah, that's what we actually got from the first pack. I don't know if you get hollow in each pack. I guess we'll find out because here we have pack number two, guys. Oh, that's a pretty cool one there, Ocean Master. Someone do let me know in the comment section below. Do you collect these? Uh, like, can they be worth anything? I don't think I'll get into them because, like, I already collect far too many cards. Batgirl, Barbara Gordon there. Bat Signal, that one's fairly cool. Old school, all American comics there. I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, is that not the old school Green Lantern? Uh, then we have Lightning Strikes there, another kind of Black Adam style thing. That's Black Adam versus Hawkman again. I, th I think that is from the movie, right? But that does look more like a kind of comic artsy style version. And then, oh, that is our last card, isn't it? The Flash versus Tar Pit. So we've still got some uh, like hollowness going on there. Still pretty cool. Third and final pack here, guys. Like I said, do let me know in the comment section below if I do pull anything good. I can't imagine. I mean, they're freebies. They were called flow packs. So I don't know if um, they're like just these small packs that you get, like fun packs from Pokemon and stuff like that. So like you can't pull anything too crazy, but we got another John Diggle there. We got Themyscira. Is that how you pronounce it? I've always like not been too good with my pronunciations of anything, um, especially when it's kind of not English language, if that makes sense. So we have Guy, Guy Gardner becomes a Red Lantern there. It's fairly cool. We have Calabac. We have another black, quite a few Black Adam cards in this one. Maybe it's part of the set. I think this did say it was like set two or volume two, something along those lines. Another Black Adam there, Black Adam and the Justice Society. And then we do have this hollow card at the end, guys, of Metal Men. Yeah, fairly cool. Like I said, let me know in the comment section below. Did I pull anything good? And do you guys collect these cards? And now if you guys watched last Friday's video, you did see all my signed stuff, but I thought I would show it off once again. I got four Pokemon Pops signed by Veronica Taylor, the original voice actress, English voice actress, I should say, for Ash Ketchum in the Pokemon anime series. We got Pikachu signed with Pikachu Thunderbolt, Bulbasaur signed with Bulbasaur Vine Whip, Squirtle signed with Squirtle Water Gun, and Charmander signed with Charmander Flamethrower. And I did also get her 
decide my die cast Pokeball with the I choose Yuko. Well, to be honest, she actually chose that. But yeah, that's very, very cool. And I did also meet Jago, the voice actor behind Mewtwo and got my Mewtwo Fungapop sign. He also did this little sketch at the bottom of Mewtwo. I think very, very cool. And I did also get Kellengoff to sign two of my overhaul Fungapops. He, of course, was the English VA for the character in My Hero Academia. We have the Chalice Collectibles exclusive with just the signature. And then I did get the two pack of him and Tomura Shigaraki sign with the quote, a goal with no plan is called a delusion. And then on to my Funko Pop pickups from the weekend, guys. I did actually pick up 10 figures, starting with the Sasuke Curse Mark figure that I grabbed on the Friday. And I've been wanting to grab this figure for a long time because it looks super, super cool. Now I did pay 40 pounds for it and the box isn't in the best condition. It's like maybe a 7.5, eight out of 10. And the annoying thing is that I then found another one at a booth while I was doing Funko Pop hunting on the Sunday and it was 10 pound less and probably like the exact same conditions. I was like, oh man. But then one of the, uh, one my subscribers did also point out that uh, you can actually get the figure from Amazon EU. I think it's somewhere in Germany for like 20 or so quid. So I guess I did overpay, but it is what it is. You know what? I've bought plenty of things at retail, which have then skyrocketed in value to like 10, 20, 30 times. So like I say, some you win, some you lose. It's a really, really cool figure. I mean, we're at the back here now, but you've still got some of the curse mark there at the back of the hand, the sword, the Ochiha crest. I mean, it is like, this is like old school Sasuke, right? When you think about it, they've never made like, um, when I say old school, I mean like the OG Naruto series, right? They haven't really made any figures from that. Um, yet we do have this one here of Sasuke. I mean, I, maybe there are a couple that I'm not really like thinking off of the top of my head, but the majority of them are, of course, from Shippuden. Whereas, yeah, this one definitely very much uh, like the OG Naruto. But yeah, it's such a cool looking figure with a Sharingan, yellow eye there, curse mark, Chudori. Yeah, very, very cool figure. And I'm gonna go straight to the most expensive pop of the weekend I purchased, guys, because the rest are kind of like sets. We have Rukia here from Bleach, as you guys can see. I paid £120 for this figure, which I actually think is a pretty fair price when you do look at the market value. Yes, maybe I could have got her for a little bit cheaper on Facebook Marketplace, etc. But you know what? You get to inspect the condition at Comic Cons, and this is kind of near mint. There's maybe a few scuffs on the window, a tiny dent near the back. Otherwise, it's pretty immaculate, right? Certainly a nine out of 10 condition. Um, yeah. Can't really say too much about the character. I still haven't seen Bleach, not seen a single episode. If you guys did watch the video just before MCM Comic Con, I did actually grab a bunch of Bleach Funga Pops as well. Uh, I just know that I'm gonna like it. Uh, someone, like another subscriber mentioned, if you liked Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, which I very much did love the first season, you'll love Bleach. And I just know, you know what, well, I love Naruto. I love One Piece. It's kind of like, Bleach is then like the other OG one, right? The OG trio as they call them. So I have no doubt I'll love Bleach as well and just wanted to get these figures before they like skyrocket or go even more. I don't know if they will skyrocket anymore, but certainly value could go up more. I mean, this pop is from 2015. But uh, yeah, very cool, very happy to add it to the collection. And then as I said, guys, the rest of the pops I picked up are all sets. Well, technically the next one, they're not sets, but they are all from the same franchise. I added another three One Piece figures to my collection. We got Hancock, Doflamingo, and Buffed Chopper. I don't know if you guys can make it out there in the top corner, there is a little dink. And I actually said to the guy, you know what? I like to get a lot of my Funko Pop signed, particularly anime ones in the hope that VA actors and actresses do come over to the UK. And uh, so therefore I'm gonna like turn it down. And he said, well, I could actually knock some money off you. He ended up knocking off £10. It was 40 I managed to get it for 30 Yes, I know there are restocks going on with One Piece figures at the moment. I'm still waiting for a ton from Double Box Toys that I ordered back in July last year. But I was like, ah, I don't know if Hancock's going to come back in. It was on Pop Culture for a while. So was Doflamingo, but I miss them. They're no longer on there. So yeah. I don't know if these are going to come back in stock and Boa Hancock has quickly become one of my favourite characters in the show. Because to be perfectly honest, I'm a sucker for that anime trope where there's a character who's in love with, infatuated with another character, but then that character's kind of almost too dumb to see it or they don't reciprocate, etc, etc. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like it and it's a bit of a cliche, but it's something that I do actually really like. And so like, yeah, all the scenes with Hancock uh, kind of being infatuated with Luffy and he seems a bit like nonchalant, he doesn't really know what's going on, right? Or he certainly doesn't have those like reciprocal uh, feelings either. But um, yeah, I just think Hancock, like she's sexy, she's badass, but she's also got that air of vulnerability, right? If you guys are wondering, I've just, well, I'm still on the Marine Ford arc, but the war is over. We've got through the emotional bits uh, without going into those in too much detail because it is spoilers for anyone who hasn't got up to this point. In fact, you know what? The next episode actually goes back in time and shows 
like Luffy meeting Ace and Sabo and things like that. I think there's like 10 or 12 episodes um, of that. So that's where I am. But yeah, this Hancock figure, very, very cool. The earrings, the outfit. It's a really, really good looking one. Like I said, I really do like the character. Next up, we have Doflamingo. And once again, guys, this is a really good looking pop. I mean, to be perfectly honest, and I've said this multiple times in the past, Fungo typically do a really good job with their anime Fungo Pops, at least in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think of their anime Fungo Pops in the comment section below but yeah very very colorful i have of course seen doflamingo quite a few times but there's still like a mystery of what his like devil fruit powers are i'm sure it will come up eventually um, i mean he hasn't really done battle with luffy or anything like that so it's certainly something that's i well at least i'm expecting it to come like i know a lot of the things that do come because it is hard to avoid spoilers when you're in something so late but there's also loads of things i don't know just yet i don't like regularly go looking for stuff right so uh yeah please don't spoil anything for me in the comments section below but yeah, like i said a really really good looking pop uh and yeah happy to add it to what i no doubt expect to be an ever-growing one piece collection and the last of the one piece Funko pops i picked up guys is buff chopper it's still a good looking pop but i do have to say this is one i feel fungo maybe could have done a slightly better job on like it looks good it just i, I feel it could have been better and it's only from 2021 uh spring convention exclusive i'm trying to think maybe emerald city comic-con but i know they kind of moved their dates around a bit after the pandemic so i'm not too sure if it was then but it is a green sticker so i'm thinking it was but um yeah it's still a decent pop nonetheless like i say i just feel it could have maybe been been a little bit better but I'm still happy to get it and add it into the collection I would love for them to make like a 10 inch monster point chopper you know with like the the reindeer horns the white eyes I think that could look absolutely epic and the last figures I picked up, guys, I briefly showed them off in the Fungo Pop Hunt video from Sunday, but I grabbed the Kill Bill set. Cannot wait to take closer looks at these. And this set actually released back in 2014, so it's almost 10 years old. The movie, at least volume one, actually released 20 years ago. It's the 20th anniversary this year. Of course, volume two released back in 2004, so it will be the 20th anniversary of volume two next year. Uh, yeah, I'm a big, big Quentin Tarantino fan. Loved Kill Bill. It was actually the first and only movie uh, uh, that was an 18 certificate over here in the UK that I actually watched in the cinema when I wasn't yet 18. I was 17, if you guys wondered, and that's kind of giving away my age, but loved Kill Bill. I remember thinking like Kill Bill Volume 2, when it first came out, I think I preferred it over Kill Bill Volume 1, but then over time, as I like went back, I was like, now nah, you know what? I actually do like Kill Bill Volume 1 more, but here we have the bride guys in that real iconic yellow outfit. Like, what was it? it jumpsuit? Is that the right word to use? I don't really know. I'm not really a fashionista, if you guys couldn't tell from, I just really wear geeky t-shirts and crap, right? So uh, I really couldn't tell you what it is, but it's very cool the one thing i think they could have maybe done was made it like a little bit bloody um, after a big battle with the crazy 88s but uh yeah it's still a pretty cool figure especially one from 2014 and then we have bill who's technically the titular character when you think about it the main antagonist of both films he was brilliantly played by david carradine who died in the most kind of tragic and bizarre circumstances right i won't go into it too much but it was about like 15 years ago now i think right i just remember thinking man that's like the whole thing was bizarre but i, I loved his performance as bill i thought he was so so good i really did actually want him to win an oscar was he even nominated actually I can't remember. I think it was for a Golden Globe, but I don't think he actually got a nomination for the Oscar. Could be wrong, though. But uh, yeah, pretty cool figure. I mean, we're at the back here, so it's pretty much his grey hair. Um, and then we have the sword. I do kind of wonder, like, like, I would have preferred the flute as opposed to the sword, to be honest, because we saw him use the flute prominently throughout the, uh, the second movie. But I'm kind of wondering... Now I'm looking, looking at the boxes, it is just Kill Bill. It doesn't say anything about volume one or volume two. So, but then again, he wasn't in volume one, was he? Like you never saw his face. So yeah, I guess they kind of encompass both movies, right? And then we have Oren Ishii. She was of course brilliantly played by Lucy Liu as well. You know what, I was just thinking as well, 20 years, it'd be really, really cool if we got some more Kill Bill pops, like some anniversary ones, different poses, maybe a moment, like her with like a few crazy 88s around that could have looked really, really cool. Or even like the, the snow garden. I'm sure there's more of like a specific term for those types of gardens um, where she does battle Oren Ishii. That could be like quite cool, like battle scene moment. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to see more. I'd love to see more Quentin Tarantino pops in general, you know what I mean? 
like I said, I'm a big, big fan of his movies. But yeah, the Oranishi Epoch guy is very, very cool. Like, it looks basic, but there's still, like, enough detail on it to still make it pretty cool. The two, well, I was actually about to say the two swords. One is the sheath, of course. Um, kind of got, like, the, um, the slightly rosy cheeks. Obviously, the flower in the hair as well. Yeah, it's just really, really cool. It actually really makes me want to go back and watch the movies because it's been a long time since I actually watched Kill Bill. And the next one in the set, guys, is Gogo Yubari. I forget the actress's name. She's a Japanese actress uh she was in battle royale i'm pretty sure it was her performance in that movie which convinced quentin tarantino to cast her for this role um this kind of crazy kind of kooky uh like assassin for lack of a better word who kind of wears this school outfit i don't know if that's a way to like entice guys in and then she just kind of rips them like mullers them right uh with that ball on a chain i'm sure there's a more correct term for the weapon mace spiked mace on a chain someone let me know in the comment section below what is the correct term for that weapon she um now, now the uh there is an exclusive of her in this set so technically i haven't completed the set it's like the bleeding eyes one i'm trying to remember off the top of my head does she actually have the uh like the wooden plank with the nails in the side of the head as well it's of course how she actually dies um when beatrix actually kills her uh, it's probably a spoiler but come on guys 20 years ago now um that's definitely what the exclusive is who it was exclusive to i'm not entirely sure i mean like i said these pops are 10 years old i don't think i started collecting pops till about three years after these actually came out so i couldn't tell you for sure but uh i will have to get that one day but it is the most expensive one in the collection and the last one in the set, guys, is the cheapest and probably the most boring one. It is just a crazy 88 member. Maybe I should have started with this one, but I wanted to go in the numbered order. He is number 72, and it starts at number 68 with The Bride, a.k.a. Beatrix Kiddo, was it? I think it was Beatrix Kiddo, right? I'm pretty sure that's what her name was. Or did he just call it? I can't remember. Like I said, I need to go back and watch the movie. It's been a long time. But yeah, it's just a crazy 88 member with his mask, in his suit, with a sword. Would have been cool if they made a couple of variants of these. There were like some figures. You know what? I did actually buy the Bride and Gogo Yubari. I can't remember who they were made by though. Like she had like the bloody um, the bloody chest after the battle and Gogo came with like the swinging mace thingy. Um, but you could buy, like, there were different versions of the, um, of the Crazy 88 figures you could buy. I think they even had, like, limbs that could remove, and they had, like, blood squirting features and stuff like that. And I think they did make, like, a limited version of Quentin Tarantino himself as a Crazy 88 member, because he was, I believe, if memory serves me right, you could actually see him in the reflection of her sword in one of the scenes. Um, that was like his only cameo because he does cameo in his films a lot, but he did, like he really wasn't. That was literally it, the only cameo in uh, in Kill Bill. But um, yeah, it's it's still a decent figure. It's just like I said, the most cheapest one and probably the most boring one, but still cool nonetheless. And well, there we go, guys. That's all my pickups from MCM Comic Con, and that is therefore going to do it for today's video. So first and foremost, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me here on the Geek Lounge. It is very much appreciated, and I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If so, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop some comments below. If you guys attended MCM Comic Con, what did you pick up? Autographs, Fungo Pops, TCGs, posters, other merchandise? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, we have plenty more content on the way for you guys. I will finally be getting to my WrestleCrate UK Mystery subscription box in tomorrow's video. It is the May box. We've got more Fungo Pops to show off because I really need to catch up with my Fungo Pop parcels now. I've had quite a few come in like just before MCM Comic Con, so we still need to get through to those. More cards. Like we've got the One Piece cards to open up, more Demon Slayer, more Naruto Kayu, tons more stuff coming for you guys, Star Wars figures, statues, etc. All that jazz. Make sure you stay tuned for all of it and more. What is the easiest way to stay tuned to us? It's very simple. Subscribe, hit click smash that subscribe button and enable those notifications so you don't miss out on any of that future content. Guys, thanks again for watching today's video and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out, nerds.